let's get to Stephen's question. Stephen, my apologies. Stephen asks, why don't you show overhead camera shots of, of your notes? See, Stephen knows it. Stephen knows what's going on. No, I'm joking. Stephen really asks, I've really gone all in on time blocking and it definitely works. Now, though, it feels like I have even more to do and I find myself feeling as though I am forgetting something, even though I do a shutdown ritual and weekly plan. Is this normal? Um, and with time, does this feeling go away? Uh, Stephen, it does go away. The thing you need to lean into to make it go away is the shutdown ritual. I created the shutdown ritual for exactly this issue. I was suffering from this as a grad student at MIT. I was having a hard time shutting down. Like I'm forgetting things or I need to keep making progress on a problem. Uh, I've talked about this before on the show, but at the time there was like a key theorem for my, my PhD dissertation and, and it wasn't, it was not working. I was like, oh, man, I got to keep thinking about it because if it doesn't work, the dissertation's not going to work. It's a problem. And I was like, I need a way to just kind of shut down, like um, shut down. Here's what I worked on today. This didn't work. Here's why. Here's the, the next avenue of attack I'm going to do tomorrow and write that down as part of my shutdown ritual so I could just trust it. All right. I don't have to keep thinking about this tonight. And aside about that, by the way, uh, just a tip to aspiring doctoral students, uh, because I was bored and antsy in general, I was writing books and doing things like this. I had a ton of publications. What you normally do in theoretical computer science is say, yes, it's time to write a dissertation. Of course, I'm going to draw from these mini publications I've spent a lot of time on, and I'm going to pull together ideas I have already published and presented and is peer reviewed, and I'm, I'm going to expand upon it. And this is what I'm going to do for my dissertation. That is what you should do. Instead, I said, I don't know. I'm kind of bored. I'm just going to do something from scratch. I'm just going to, I'm going to come up with a brand new idea, pull it out of the air and do a whole dissertation in a six month period on mathematical concepts that I'm just going to invent. I haven't published. I haven't gone through them. I have no collaborators on them just because I was bored. It worked out. The thesis was fine, but it was nerve wracking because exactly what I'm talking about here. I'm halfway through this thing. Like, wait, maybe the, my idea doesn't work here because it's, I'm doing it from scratch as I'm supposed to be writing my dissertation. So it was, it was quite stressful. Anyway, so I invented the shutdown ritual. It works, it takes some time. Let me just briefly review what you have to do to make the shutdown ritual work properly. Mechanically, the idea with the shutdown ritual is that you go through and you review every potential open loop. All right? Um, loose notes have been processed. Uh, there's no critical email that needs an urgent response that I missed. I've looked at my weekly plan on my calendar. I know what's coming up. I know what's coming up tomorrow. I see a plan for tomorrow. If there's some things I need to do tonight, non-professional things that I need to do tonight that I, I see in my calendar, my weekly plan, I've written them down. So, so I, I can see them right there. There is no open loop. There's nothing I am forgetting. I've, I've taken notes on the conversations. I've sent the follow-up emails. Now I say a phrase that is unique, like schedule shutdown confirm, or if you use a time block planner, I'm going to cross out the shutdown complete checkbox. That's the mechanical thing you do. You have to couple that with the psychological addendum. And this was what made the shutdown ritual really work for me as a grad student, is that after you do that shutdown, when your mind then wants to keep thinking about work, which Stephen, I'm telling you, until you get really used to this, it 100% will. That's what you're experiencing. When your mind says, forget that, I want to think about the email we just sent to Joshua uh, uh, about, you know, why doesn't Cal have more overhead shots of his notes? And maybe I should have, maybe I need to send that a different email or word that differently, or I need to talk to my, you know, my boss tomorrow and let's think that through. Your mind's like, we got to keep thinking about work. And you can't blame it. You just spent eight hours with work-related circuits firing left and right, all right? Um, and so, yeah, that's active in your brain. That's what's popping up. What you do, this is the key psychological addendum to the mechanical shutdown, is you say, I hear it, but I'm not going to get into the details, mind, of what you want me to get into. I'm not going to get into the details of the email to Stephen. I'm not going to get into the details about the meeting with the boss tomorrow. Instead, what I'm going to say is, we did the shutdown. I said the phrase, or I checked that box. I would not have said that phrase, and I would not have checked that box if I had not gone through everything on our plate and closed down all the open loops and made sure that we had a plan I trusted for tomorrow. So no, I'm not going to get into it, psychologically, ruminatively speaking. And you do that again and again and again. 
The progress is made every single time that your mind wants you to get into a specifics about work and you say instead, I did the shutdown routine, so we don't need to get into that. I did the shutdown routine, so we don't need to get into it. I like to use the metaphor when I think about my own crazy mind of grooves that get, you get these grooves that your, your thoughts want to fall into and you're filling in the grooves each rejection at a time. Each time you say, no, nah, I did the routine, I did the routine. You're filling in the groove, filling in the groove until it's shallow enough that your, your thoughts don't get stuck in it and they move on to something else. So how long does this take? I don't know, two to three weeks maybe. Give it a month to be safe. But if you're rigorous about this, this is the miracle of the shutdown routine the thoughts slow down and you become much better at not thinking completely about work after work. And it is a huge positive difference. The only other thing I would add is have a capture notebook, right? Accessible in your house and uh, really have a, a serious routine of the first thing you do in the morning when you look and make your daily time long time block plans, you look at that notebook and anything you wrote down in that notebook, you process and look at. Yeah, really be very diligent about that. If you do that, um, if a new thing pops to mind during the evening after a shutdown routine, you write it in the notebook. So you don't have to open up your computer. You don't have to go into your email. You don't have to write a note to yourself and put it by your bathroom mirror so you don't forget it. You just write it in the notebook. And if your mind trusts, like that's what I, as part of my time block planning is I look at that capture and process it. Um, that will prevent that, that when that happens, when something legitimately new comes to mind, oh man, I forgot to send a message about Cal using overhead camera. You can jot that down. Your mind's like, okay, I'm okay with it. All right, so you do those two things. You're going to be able to have a lot more presence with your brain after work. All right, this is where, if we, again, if we had the overhead cam, you would see coming in, whoo, crossed off a name. I can see it. It's very compelling to see. All right, let's move on here. Check out our time stamp. It's one of the things we miss about Jesse being here is uh, I have to mind my own time here. 